Hi again, Doug here from X-Frames FPV, and today I've got another build-out video for you. And I'm excited about this because it's not often that I get to build something that has a different configuration. And well, what are we talking about? Well, you can see right away there's something very different. This is a V-tail. You know, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> it looks like a V and it's the tail. Uh, this is from Nito. This is their Widowmaker. And I'm really excited to get this one built. Going to spend a little bit of extra time uh, doing a few things to accentuate the looks of it because we, this is a really special one for my customer. And so, you know, you mount the motors on a V-tail, the mount, they are inverted. And so that's going to, it's going to be a really fun flyer. More, it has more kind of obviously turn in authority because of the angle and you know the the motors um being at that angle are going to give it more of a turn in authority and so it'll be it should be a really fun one to fly um like i said we're going to do a few things to it to kind of get it all nice and beautiful you know it's got these nice 3d printed landing pads on the back and then also that has it on the front so it makes it really nice for um for a little bit extra protection when you're landing, especially since the, like I said, the motors are inverted and you do have the props kind of closer, closer to the ground. And so, um, really beautiful. Let's get some measurements. I believe it's a three millimeter. Let me show that out. Three millimeter bottom plate. Yeah. If you can see that right at three millimeters. Um, let's see if I can get a weight on this as well. And sorry for my voice guys, still kind of fighting this cold. Um, let me see if we got everything on here. Yeah. The only thing is I'm not going to include these because, well, I will. Let me give you a weight with those and without, because this is, would be, can, I can, would consider this to be, I guess it's not really optional on this frame. So. Um, let's do it that way. And with those right at 128 grams. So it's not obviously being a V tail, there's more material there towards the back. And so, um, it's not surprising that it's not one of the lighter frames that you're going to find out there, but it's really made well and got the forward design is, I believe is the same as the brake neck, the 205. And then obviously he's modified it towards the back here. And the V part is 3D printed. It's pretty common. Um, I would say if you buy one of these, buy an extra extra bracket just because um, if you do have a crash. Now, you know, one of the things in a crash now that the arms are up, the the motors are going to take a lot of the the impact and so um, sometimes that's a benefit as far as the props will kind of take a little bit of the impact and and reducing the impact on this tail piece here but we'll kind of see how that goes you know being the first time i've ever built this one um, we'll get it get it to fly and really see how it performs but let's get it into some components for this because i'm excited about some of the components and in particular, these, these are the new F60s. Let's make sure you can get and see it because it's really hard with these. These are the F60 Pros from T-Motor. And this is a, just a gorgeous motor, the silver windings with the black on silver. And this is their 2500 KV F60. And we wanted to really provide a lot of power here. And get a look. Nice curved magnets. It's just it's just beautiful. It really is a beautiful motor. And so those are those are um relatively new. They've only been out for a little while. You know, you've had the F sixty out for a while, and these are the F sixty pros. Um I'm not too familiar, you know, there's not a ton of information out there on the differences. Um what they're saying is it provides a little bit more power with um, with better efficiency. And, you know, we could use better efficiency on these F-Series motors for sure. They're really powerful, but they do have 
they are kind of thirsty. So let's get into the flight controller. Let's first go to the 4-in-1 BEC, 4-in-1. And this is an ESC that's BL Heli S. It's 35 amps times 4. And opto meaning no built-in voltage regulator or BEC. And we don't need that on this. And the reason we don't is because we're running this. This is the Lumineer Lux flight controller. And it takes direct voltage from the LiPo. And so... Um, because of that, and because we're using the Tramp for VTX, which takes straight LiPo power as well and handles it, handles the spikes from the ESC without any problem with this one. And so because of that, we no longer need a flight or a PDB. And so we're going to go directly off of the 4-in-1 ESC off the LiPo power here, go directly into our flight controller, and then directly into our Tramp VTX, and then from the Tramp to our camera with 5 volts out. The Tramp puts 5 volts out, and the camera we're running is the Aero, which has built-in OSD. This is the Pyro Drone Aero or Fox Ear Aero. And um, it has, we will also have to tap from the lipo, where the lipo comes in, we will have to tap off of that into the camera so that we can get our voltage and current and all of that information. So the thing that it does is it allows us to eliminate the PDB and that's weight and cost. Uh, more of a weight thing because these are, I would say, probably $10, about $10 more for the 4-in-1 ESC over, let me see, is it? No, it's really about the same because this was $60 and it's about $60 for four 30-amp ESCs. And so, um, but it does eliminate that weight and that's really a great thing. Um, especially in this build, we're getting, we're kind of heavy. Let's weigh these motors because we're kind of on the heavy side on the frame, right? Not super heavy, but we are heavier than normal, than what a normal, especially now that we have the stacked builds, and, and those are usually really light. Um, and then we're going to be heavier on the motor for sure. We've got 36 grams, so we're, you know, between 8 and and 6 grams heavier than, than your normal 2206 motor. So that's going to add some weight, but we're going to save it in the ESCs being a four and one ESC. So that's, you know, one reason to run them. Another reason is it just cleans everything up. I'm, I'm not too concerned. Sorry. I'm charging, charging some lipos. Really? I'm not too concerned. You know, a lot of people say, I don't want a four and one because if, if one of the ESCs burn out, then I have a problem with all, I have to replace it. I basically have to throw this away and done with it. And that is true. If you do burn an ESC out, then then you're going to have to replace the whole unit. But I will tell you, it's I've said this in other videos, and I'll just you know kind of restate it here. I have very seldom see a problem with ESC, especially now. And so it's not a big concern for me. These ESCs are built so well anymore that um, that I just don't see a big problem with them. And maybe you've had problem with ESCs before, and and it makes you not want to run this. Then you know, I, I would understand that. But for me and for the cust my customers and the repairs that I get in, it's very seldom an ESC problem. You know, when the when the little bees came out, those were great ESCs, but they were a little fragile. And so, you know, we were fighting with that. But now that we have just these this new technology, I don't find a problem with with the ESCs burning out. And so I'm not afraid to run those. Now one of the nice things we talk about again on this tramp, obviously, is how small it is. Let's get a weight on it as well. I'm moving everything around. This is kind of one of those videos that um, I just kind of wing it a little bit. And hopefully that's not annoying to you guys, but that's kind of my style. <laughs> but that is 9 grams. Really nice and light VTX. And you have the option on this VTX 
am running this separate receiver. I don't know if it's a receiver, but it basically is because this tramp has the ability to run a wand and you can set the wand to the specific band and frequency and milliwatts that you want to run, wave it over it and it automatically changes it. And that's great in racing because a lot of, uh, you know, some of the people, you know, I know when they did the New York, um, the race, the nationals in New York, they required everybody to have this so that they can keep control of, of everybody's VTX and even, you know, shut, shut down the, it from producing any kind of signal. And so that's great. It's also great for people who don't race, but they fly sometimes with other people. And so you want to run it at 200 milliwatts then, but then when they're by themselves or in a little bit more opened up area, you know, um, I'm thinking specifically of my customer in Texas, he flies sometimes in a, he's got big shops out there and big, um, barns and he flies sometimes in a barn or a shop. Then he'll fly out with maybe a friend. And then sometimes he flies in this really opened up area. Well, in that case, it'd be great to have that one because you don't have to go in there and do any settings. You just boop, wipe it and you're done. So that's a really great, great value for, um, and a great, option for somebody to be able to have. I think the wand is around $40, so it's not super expensive. Uh, this customer runs the Turnigy Evolution, and so we'll be running the TGY IA6C. This is the stock receiver that comes with it. We're going to be depinning it. We also will be shortening the wires. Now, you know, I, people sometimes are afraid of shortening the wires. This gray part, that is just the length of the the wire to get it away from some of the electronics. Well, obviously in a build like this, we don't need that long. And so we'll shorten it up. The part that's exposed, that's the part that needs to be a certain length for the 5.8 reception. And so you, um, that's not a problem. So all in all, this is going to be a fun one. It's going to be one that's going to take a while because I am going to do some custom things, like I said, to the looks of it. I'm excited to see these F60s in in a build and or F60 Pros in a build and really get an idea of what they can do. So that's about it, guys. I appreciate you a bunch. I hope you're getting something out of these videos and check out my website, xframesfpv.com. And there you can see uh, kind of some of my builds and kind of pricing and that kind of thing. I need to update the builds because <laughs> they're it's been a while since I put some new pictures on there, but it'll give you an idea. And, um, again, that's xframesfpv.com. And I hope you guys are enjoying these and I hope you have some time to fly. <laughs>